Welcome, everybody. We have a, a great talk here about social change uh, through music. I have three people and on my screen, uh, on the left upper side, it's Etienne Abelin from El Sistema. Monia Schmid is from Musica ohne Grenzen, Musicians Without Borders. And she was uh, until March in Accra, in Ghana. And then um, we have Andreas Knapp, who has a, an organization called Hangar Music, and he's currently in, on the island of Chios in the Aegean Sea in, in Greece. So to begin this, it would be great to, to get to know a little bit your organization, especially the work you do actually, or the work you have done. And I would like to start with Monia, with uh, mu Musicians Without Borders, reporting from Accra, Ghana. Mm, yeah, I was in Accra until March this year. And I stayed there for one year in total. And I was teaching the cello uh, mainly there and then also the violin and the piano a bit. It depends because sometimes not every uh, uh, instrument has a teacher who's there right now. So uh, I kind of had to switch for some time, but basically mainly I was teaching the cello and yeah, it was a good time. <laughs> yeah. So how does it work? It would be nice to, to, to know from you uh, how many people are working there in which places do you teach music? How do you find these children to teach to? Mm, it really depends because uh, there are some different standpoints. So there's the VG, like a, flat, a shared flat uh, with all the volunteers from Musik ohne Grenzen. And um, it depends which instrument you play. Some will go to different places than others. Mm. There's one um, uh, orphanage where mm. we were teaching since, I think, seven years. Mm -hmm. um, there were some children who were really good already on the instrument because they got a lot of support from the the, the school there. Yes, yeah, the school okay. there. Yeah. And they were really looking out for them to practice. And then there was some different schools where we are going. Um, some had the possibility that we could go to the library uh, to practice. There were some rooms. We stored the instruments there. And then, yeah, basically that's where we went. And the um, projects have different age. So some, the oldest one is in Nima at the Amis. It started like 15 years ago. So this one is really old. And then the youngest is like maybe three years old. So they really develop differently. This, for me, I was most of the time in Nima in the Amis school. So uh, most of the children came there almost every day to the library. I was there every day. I picked them up from school and I walked with them to the library and then I practiced with them. And with the cello uh, children, I did lessons. The other ones I supported with practicing. Um, yeah, it's really different. For some um, different schools, the Nungwa school, for example, they're the teacher, the, they only have violins there. So the violin teacher will uh, make an appointment with the students so they will go there and meet on Wednesday at four or something. Mm. But for the Amis, um, it was this way that uh, every day after school I went there to pick the people up mm -hmm. and then we went to practice. And some could come once a week, some could come every day. And you can really see how the people who come every day, they will really develop faster. It's really amazing to see. Mm -hmm. But it was sad too for some people where you can see, okay, they can only come once a week because the parents didn't let them go more often. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to practice more, but yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's interesting as a start to get an idea. Uh, maybe Andreas, if you want to continue, uh, what is the situation like in Kios? What is your daily work and how does the organization work there? Um, well, we are kind of in the pre-musical pre period because mm -hmm. we were supposed to start, but there came this thing called COVID-19 mm -hmm. in the way. And um, we have instruments here. And um, what we're doing now, we're building up a network which even makes us able to work in the camp because you need a lot of um, permissions and all these things. Mm -hmm. um, the only musical activity we have at the moment is very interesting because we are uh, based in a, in a mandarin farm mm -hmm. where they grow mandarins. 
And uh, we also live next door with policemen who are working in the camp, taking care of the security. And one of the policemen now takes lessons from Laila Weber, the, uh, the uh, viola player studied in Freiburg, mm -hmm. which uh, I uh, do the project with. Mm -hmm. And so this um, policeman knows that in a, maybe next week or in two weeks, he will have to give back his violin and this violin will go on the other side of the fence to a child in the camp. And so what we do is we use classical music actually as a social tool. Mm -hmm. And only talking about the idea to do this project opened a lot of doors and brought people together who would normally not even speak to each other. And so I think this is a wonderful way to describe music also when it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And um, I always have to think about Helmut Lachermann, who, who would say, actually, the music is, the, the silence is more important than mm -hmm. the sound. Mm -hmm. And But to experience the silence, you need the sound. Mm -hmm. And so uh, um, at this moment, we um, talk to a lot of adults, to um, people who uh, work for NGOs, we collaborate with NGOs, and in the next step is everybody is kind of already curious what happens mm -hmm. and we know what we do because we started this five years ago in berlin as um, a camp like we have it here these circumstances had been in berlin because we had all these refugees coming and at the beginning as we all know it was a big mess in berlin they put 1000 people or 3000 people in huge former airplane hunger maintenance halls. And uh, among these people, there were a thousand kids who had nothing to do. And so we said, oh, we have to do something. And so we went uh, just with the instruments or with paper instruments and with some uh, knowledge we had out of the El Sistema uh, system in Venezuela. Uh, and we adjusted it to the local situation and just we started and today, after five years, we still run this project and we have children who are um, able to play little parts of Beethoven or Ali Feuder or Mahler symphonies or a bit from the Mozart opera. And uh, we also combine this with local children like Berlin kids who come and often they don't know the music. And so the children who worked in the camp now introduce this kind of music to them. Mm -hmm. And so this is what we it's a very interesting way to share cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. And we use actually classical music because in Berlin, in the National Library, the original score of Beethoven 9 is sitting. And what we do is actually we share our culture with these children. It's like you have new neighbors and you share your food and you share your music. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. And uh, so it's not about... A, a higher education and it's not about a one-to-one -one teaching to make them professional um, artists. It's, it's about a possibility to come together and to grow into European culture, which is the, the area they are now coming into. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we give them a possibility to develop a common language before they even speak the language. And looking from the point here, we have children from Somalia, from Afghanistan, from uh, Arabia, from, from Turkey, from, from Kenya, from, from Ghana, and from wherever. And um, they can't speak to each other, but already they play with each other without being able to speak to each other. And so we give them a little help that in whatever country they will come, if it's Sweden, if it's Switzerland, if it's Germany, they already have a little cultural tool mm -hmm. and so they can adapt. And also you can reach the parents um, because they get involved if they want or not, because there is something going on, nobody really understands. Mm -hmm. And now we really even can, uh, can involve the police and uh, this policeman, he, he works there since a year and he never was in the camp. Mm -hmm. He was only outside. And today he said to me, oh, 
but maybe then I come and I play with the kids. And this is Amazing. kind of a revolution yeah. only in the thinking. And that's what we do at the moment. Yeah. We do social networking and use things. Yeah, we use our experience from Berlin. This gives us the trust that it will work. And um, the rest is to come. Wow, that's so interesting. It's very grassroots to start from nothing and then build Indeed. whatever relation is possible. We know the festivals here. We, we participated on the festival, there's a Rios Music Festival, mm -hmm. and I know people from the Samos Festival and from the Lesbos Music Festival. And all this, um, uh, uh, and we are here actually because they don't do this kind of work we do. Mm -hmm. It's not that we blame them, it's because you, have, you just have to do it. You have to be uh, mm. strange enough and crazy enough just to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but so also we have a connection to here. Uh, to, to this island. But mm -hmm. for example, there is a pianist who, would, who wanted to, um, to practice in a... There's one grand piano on that island. And, uh, but he's not allowed to practice there because if they allow one person, they have to allow maybe another person. Mm -hmm. So you, you run all in all these restrictions. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's, a, it's a different situation. And, and we are here also because we are five kilometers from Turkey, and uh, it's just over the over the river, I would almost say. Mm. But we are in the middle of Europe, and the conditions in this camp at this moment. This is why I'm like here. We, we, the, the, the the heating is broke down, and it's a bit cold. But outside there, are the people only in tents. Mm. They don't have something on the floor. It's zero degrees. It snowed, and uh, this is no fun. Mm. And so it's actually also a protest against European politics because it's not the people here who would be against these people. They feel um, uh, abandoned from, from the official politics. Mm. And so what we do is we give them also support because we, we come here and we say, we do this work also for you and to support you. And so the Greek people, they really acknowledge and they, they support us. And some support us and say, but please don't tell some other Greeks because I'm going to get into, into trouble. Mm -hmm. And so it's much more than just having the order and the Freude. But mm. the order and the Freude, only the text is the hymn of the European Union. They could agree on a, on a melody, but they couldn't agree on Schiller. They couldn't agree on a text. Mm -hmm. They hadn't even the courage to, to ask someone to write a new text. So what we have, we have the basis of European culture committed. And this is what we do here. We, we are going to go and have this music here. And we, we create a kind of a European community in small. So you have NGOs from England, from Norway, from Ireland, from wherever here. And they do the work which the official governments or politics or whatever institutions just don't do. Yeah. I mean, and on one hand, it's great. On the other hand, it's not how it's supposed to be done. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. That's impressive. I mean, this is a, a hotspot at the moment, if you watch the news and, and everything. But I, I would like to... Uh, to go on uh, with with Etienne, this is very seems very grassroots, you know, as compared to when you probably entered El Sistema. Because my understanding is that El Sistema is from the 70s. Could you briefly describe for those uh, in the in the live stream who don't know about it uh, a little description and then your history with it? Yes, El Sistema grew in Venezuela in in, in the 70s uh, already and. Uh, Many people didn't know, didn't know about this. It was a music education approach uh, that started very small, very grassroots. And uh, in maybe 2000, 2001, uh, which was uh, the time um, when, if, when, when some conductors, uh, Western conductors, European conductors went to Venezuela and uh, uh, came back and, and started talking about what was going on over there. Claudio Abado went, went, went there when we had a concert in Caracas in 1999 and uh, uh, we didn't know 
that El Sistema existed, but we did notice that there were a lot of young people in the, in the concert hall and in the, rehearsal, uh, in the rehearsals, and we couldn't quite figure out what was going on. But later we learned, we learned about this and uh, Venezuelan musicians came to Europe, played in, played in orchestras and then, and then increasingly there was a great interest in what was going on. And then there were also some uh, uh, really fantastic youth orchestras and conductors, Gustavo Dudamel uh, um, first, first of all started to tour uh, around the world and uh, showed sort of the the peak of, of what was going on. But there was actually a lot more going on than, than a few uh, top level youth orchestras. There was a whole approach to music education, which became interesting. And, and we started uh, talking in Europe. Um, some projects started happening in various places um, that were inspired by, uh, by El Sistema Venezuela. The question was, was always, well, what can we learn? Uh, what is adaptable and how are the things that that they did um, influence and can lead away to a you know even more more uh, up to date more progressive uh, music education approach. So so that was interesting. Then then we started Sistema Europe as sort of an umbrella organization of uh, European uh, Sistema inspired projects and uh, uh, learned about uh, about all these uh, all these projects and. And now we have a very lively scene of many different projects with uh, different emphasis, different strengths, different uh, uh, approaches. And, and it's a really, it's a really interesting um, ecosystem of, of projects. Yeah, for Musik ohne Grenzen, always it's helpful if anybody is young or not young, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, and they would like to, uh, they can play an instrument or can, uh, take part in Music on the Grenz and then always feel free to apply for the organization because we always need volunteers um, of any instrument. It doesn't matter. Some There's always uh, there's also a project in Jamaica. There are two in Ecuador. There's one in Hamburg mm -hmm. um, and one in Accra. So there are many places around the world where we need volunteers. And mm -hmm. then if you don't want to be a volunteer, you can just donate money uh, this is always useful too. Mm. And yeah, always instrument donations are very useful too. Maybe not pianos, yes. that's a bit difficult to ship, but, but anything else. <laughs> yeah, but if you have yeah. a keyboard, it will yeah. be very welcome too. Or okay. any type of instrument. Sometimes we get crazy donations, but we can always use it. In Accra, most of the children play the violin, mm -hmm. but recently some really wanted to start to play um, a brass. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, so... We're trying to develop more and more, but since the corona had a setback, probably right now the string Strings, instruments yeah. uh, would be the most use, uh, need, uh, needed right now. I think it would be a, a big help for projects, and maybe I can even speak for mm -hmm. Etienne in this case, if the universities or the music high schools would include this kind of work in, in their curriculum in a way that it's not felt like uh, the last exit if you don't get a position in an orchestra, but an equal, uh, wealthy, worthy work to do. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, mm -hmm. the other thing is uh, that there should be an education in, in music. For example, when you study violin in Freiburg, um, at the end, you get a diploma as an orchestra musician. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, you never played in an orchestra. So you get actually a, a degree for something, you are not really a professional. Mm -hmm. You normally learn to play in, in a professional orchestra after you got a job as an orchestra musician. And so it's the same with, with teachers who learn how to teach. They often are raised in teaching one-to-one -one things and we use uh, this music and we work always in the group mm -hmm. so we had a little problem when covid started now that our kids had no sense in playing alone in front of a computer because they only want to make music with their friends together 
It's like you would be asked to play football alone at home. It doesn't make fun. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a, a football joint uh, match put on, uh, on, on, a, on a Zoom thing, yeah. uh, but I've seen a lot of uh, videos mm -hmm. with joint concerts on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting thing. And so, uh, of course, you, uh, money, we need mm. money and we have an open account. There is enough place for it. <laughs> so, uh, but it would be also good to have people who, of course, can play an instrument. But that's almost second. Uh, uh, it's more that they have an idea about community and about the idea of growing things out of the children or let, let the things growing out of the children. Mm -hmm. So it's not about teaching a kid how to learn an instrument. Mm -hmm. We follow more the idea of how kid, children learn languages because up to an age of three, children learn different languages on their own. Nobody tells them what is wrong or what is, uh, what is right. And then the problem starts with what we call education. But uh, we have the ability to ob observe. Mm -hmm. And so um, if people want to, to work with us, it's almost more important that they have these social skills. And um, a big help for us would be when institutions uh, would already include this. And also what we do is often not considered as um, as worth doing yes uh, but when I see when a child you know the, the children we work with they play this music because they love it not because uh, Beethoven is declared important or Mozart mm -hmm. is declared important they just like the music because mm -hmm. it's great music and so um, this is what we need. we need support we also need support in going to your local politicians, going to your local uh, people who are responsible and say, music is not about fun. Mm -hmm. It's a really social tool to create, to, to, to bond a community. And it's not about them because it's, it's maybe the only thing developed by humans where you can only win together. There is no, um, Nobody has, uh, yeah, at the beginning, it's, it's funny when you work with these children because they say, oh, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. And then they still start to realize it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And so we need people who, who are able to step back and to see what is there and how does it develop and how can I support it. And so, of course, it's good to say it's exciting. I want to go to an exotic place and to help, but the help starts at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be interested uh, what's, what's the, the situation in, in both of your programs, uh, Etienne and Monia, what, what, how much group teaching there is and how much uh, single lesson teaching there is. Etienne, maybe you can, you can jump on this. Yeah, um, yeah, I was, I was gonna, I was gonna talk about that. I think that's a, a really interesting uh, or an important point. Like, what, you know, after before talking about the history of El Sistema, what, what are actually the elements that, that it consists of and what we found useful when starting a project. And one is, one is the group, the, the social factor. It's that most of the teaching in that approach happens in ensembles. And traditionally, there was a strong focus on, on Western classical music, but that's uh, also beginning to change. There's a lot of... Uh, um, um, uh, uh, quite a tendency to, to, to rethink that and to be like, okay, well, okay, Western classical music, yes, you can play orchestras, wonderful, but there's also many different other types of music and genres of music. And often there are uh, um, traditions among the people that, that uh, the participants that, uh, that are, are playing the music um, traditions of music that sort of in a way ask to be put in focus and put in mm -hmm. emphasis. And uh, so different projects deal with this differently, but it's something that is very much discussed right now. And I think rightly so. Um, 
um, yes, Western classical music, wonderful, but there's, there's, there are, there are, it's, it's really equally uh, important to, to start, to start looking at this in a, in a, bro in a broader picture, but to come back, yes, the, the, so the social situation. So it's an ensemble based approach where individual lessons sort of come in at a certain point as an accompanying thing. But the basic thing is ensemble playing many times a week. That's the second thing, high frequency. Mm -hmm. And as Monia said there uh, from Ghana, that, that, that uh, often kids can show up every day after school. That's something that, uh, that Sistema in Venezuela has also. And that of course in Europe um, cannot happen exactly in the same way. If you, if you go into a, uh, a community in, in Switzerland, um, there's school, there are other things that, that uh, kids do. Um, so the everyday thing is, is, is most, most likely not going to work. You can maybe have three times a week, a few hours, two afternoons after school, one uh, Saturday morning. That's something that I think a, a good number of projects in, in Europe are doing because it's the thing that's realistically, that that's realistically possible. But it does get kids together to play together for maybe seven, eight hours a week, which is a lot, which is very different from uh, the traditional music education as we, as we have it. Plus, of course, the focus on inclusion and making sure that access is really possible, that, that uh, the teaching happens where the kids are. Um, uh, those are sort of elements that are, that are really something that one, one can learn from around here in, in the approach. And, uh, I would second what, what Andrea said, uh, that having universities, especially universities, get involved and interested in helping to um, train young uh, student musicians to be able to empower them to do this type of work um, would be phenomenal. And, and it would include ensemble coaching, it would include social skills psychological skills, intercultural skills. It'll also include what do you do with seven or eight hours a week? Mm -hmm. Because you can set different goals in many hours a week, or if you have 15 hours, it's yet another thing. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you throw music teachers from, from, uh, that, that are teaching around here into a situation where they suddenly have seven or eight hours or 10 hours a week, they often don't really know what, what to do with, with that and what types of goals to set. What can you achieve one week? Mm -hmm. But I was steering off. Actually, I, I have, have a question uh, to, uh, to Monia. Um, if the kid come after school every day, how long do they stay? And, you know, what, what, uh, what, what is the situation? Is it always individual lesson? Like, what, what is the balance sort of, of activities that's going on? Is there improvisation? It's really different. Uh, usually I pick the kids up at four and then they will stay until six or five. Sometimes I will pick them up at three. It's usually around two hours the time they stay at the library. And then sometimes it's up to 20 kids. Sometimes it's only five. So it really depends. And sometimes I'm there alone. Sometimes there are two other volunteers with me. So yeah, if I'm alone with 20 children, then of course I cannot do individual lessons. Um, but rather I go around and support everyone's practice. Um, but what was really helpful and uh, you were asking about the um, playing together aspect of music too. Um, this is what I really noticed because some of the older children, the ones who were playing better and they could really um, help the younger ones. So sometimes I would just focus on two or three children while uh, other children were teaching other children. So it was really amazing to see how they start teaching each other and the older ones feel responsible for the younger ones. Uh, so this, is, this was really something I was working with because if not, you will lose <laughs> sight of 20 children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then um, I try to do individual lessons sometimes and sometimes play together with them. Maybe let two oboes, one cello, one violin play the same song so they can practice it all together. Uh, yeah, I tried different things. <laughs> And actually, this peer-to-peer yeah. -peer learning of, of older students coaching younger ones or more advanced students, you know, it's, it's fantastic to hear that. And that's also something that, that uh, the Sistema approaches try to um, uh, encourage and, and foster. It's not always uh, 
easy uh, and 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 but if if it's possible and if the structures allows that's that's a really uh, beautiful thing we experience yeah, this in we experience this sorry, in in the way that we we work with different and et, et, etnias uh, who are in the camp which normally wouldn't even speak to each other and so even the children uh, like from from arabia countries didn't want to be in the same room with children from Africa or Afghani kids didn't want to be with other so but it happened and we had a big row about it and so we talked to the children I said but this is not the way you you can have this here if we make music together and then it flipped and the ones who didn't want to be in the room with them said okay we thought about it but if then we will show them and so they became their teachers. So it was a kind of a very emotional moment. And so it's a, it seems wow, to be also beautiful. a natural thing that you pass on what you know. I would, I would like to come back now to a point that is really very interesting to me um, that Etienne brought up. It's, of course, the fact to bring Western classical music somewhere. For me, it doesn't appear as a problem in the, in the first place because, as Andrea said, it's wonderful music. So why not bring it and play it? Because it comes from us. We come from Europe. So let's go somewhere and play, play this music. But on the other that's hand... Not, yeah. no, sorry, that's not the reason why we, why we focus it. I okay. totally agree what Etienne says. It's, uh, we only do it because we are in Europe. Okay. If we would go to Turkey, we would have a different repertoire. Okay. Yeah, but I would, I would like to emphasize a little bit on the give and take aspect of it okay if you work in hamburg or berlin it's a different thing but if you go to accra or to 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 Chios, there is music there and there are people there are virtuosos in music there and there's a music tradition so what could be the next steps for all the organizations um uh, etienne you mentioned that sistema is thinking about expanding repertoire i would also be curious what, what possibilities there are because after all, the, the nicest situ uh, situation would be if there would be some kind of cultural exchange in, uh, musically, besides all the factors we just discussed. Where do you see this going or what possibilities do you see? Um, Monia, I, th I think you were basically teaching classical music. How did you deal with the Ganan uh, music tradition? Is there any give and take? Did you, did you get, to, get to know musicians there? Is there any kind of, of interaction? Mm, I mean, on a personal level, I took drum lessons, but I, uh, with the children, I couldn't really, you know, I cannot come there and teach them Ghanaian music because of course, yeah. Yeah. the way I'm trained, I don't know much about Ghanaian music. So what I tried to do was many times they came to me and they said, Madame, this is the song I like right now. So I said, okay, you want to play it? And many times the children came to me and said, Madame, please, can I get your phone and they will show me some song. And always I, write, uh, I wrote some songs down for them so they can play it on the cello. And it was really nice to see for them because many times if I come there with Suzuki or some classical music from Europe, they will think, OK, the piece sounds nice, but I don't know it. I don't know if I want to play it. But then sometimes if they will come to me, they bring Kwame Eugene, they say, Madame, write it for me <laughs> and I write it for them. And then when later when they can play it on the cello, sometimes five children will stay around it and sing the song with it when they can play it. So I think this was something I really tried to involve the Ghanaian music where I can do it because uh, this is the part where maybe I can try to um, make Ghanaian music part of the way I try to teach the cello. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think that's how I tried it, but I think it's really important uh, that we really keep an eye on it and not come to Africa to teach classical music because this is not uh, the time <laughs> for this anymore. Mm. Okay. Etienne, can you go a little further in this, in the approach that Sistema has, has to this? Because it, I think it's a good point. I mean, uh, first of all, to, to clarify, El Sistema Venezuela, um, is one is is like this huge organization with this tremendous history from which we all who are Sistema inspired learn mm -hmm. learn from, um, but uh, um, many of these organizations are independent of each other and are sort of just loosely connected through through a network and and learn from each other. It's not one organization um, that sort of has a has a 
it's almost like a, a open source franchise. Um, uh, there are these ideas around and the Venezuelans encourage people to basically take or leave whatever in it. And I, uh, I, I think that's, uh, that's a really, really wonderful approach. Um, what we've started to, to, well, first of all, from Sistema Europe point of view, we started to observe certain projects um, that have uh, already uh, sort of gone in, into that direction of, of dealing, dealing with, with uh, the, uh, musical uh, traditions uh, from, from the communities of, that, that they serve. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is Sistema Portugal. And uh, um, some, of the, some of the pieces that uh, they had arranged, again, Monia uh, uh, mentioned the arrange, arranging of, of some of the tunes that they brought. Um, in, in Portugal, um, they arranged some of the tunes that, uh, of the communities there to whole orchestra settings. And they, beca they became somehow uh, hit songs in Sistema Europe and, and were played, are played all over. There's this, this uh, uh, Ritmos Ciganos, which is, which is a piece uh, from, from a, a Roman gypsy uh, uh, um, community in, around Lisbon, mm -hmm. uh, which has been arranged and now it's being played all over. And, and uh, so there are musical greetings from Turkey and from Sweden that playing that tune. Mm -hmm. um, and and there are uh, there are others. Um, also, again in Portugal, there's a there's a whole tradition of improvisation and dealing dealing with uh, with jazz, with the jazz tradition and dealing dealing with uh, with um, musical languages of the communities in 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 that way. Um, and what we try to do in 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 uh, for example in the Sistema Europe Youth Orchestra, which which uh, we've been doing. Uh, now f five editions and, and going on a sixth one, is we try to balance the approaches and to balance the repertoire and balance the, the activities in a way that, um, that, uh, that, that seems right. So we'll say, okay, we have a certain percentage of time that we, that we are doing a big ensemble works. Um, we will do other things in, in Birmingham in the last edition of, of uh, Sistema Europe Youth Orchestra. We had um, creative sessions every afternoon. So there was arranging, there were, there were improvisation approaches. There was a thing, a thing I coached was sound painting, just to, just to get a bit of a balance of, of activities. Because if you have many, uh, many hours a week, you can, do, you can really also do a good number of things to have, to have sort of a, a rich, a rich menu of activities. Mm -hmm. I think what, some, uh, what what Monia was saying about about having a song brought and then adding our know-how, our know-how, in order to facilitate or help bring that out. I think that's a really beautiful thing. And I would add that to to uh, the list of of uh, um, know-how and capacities that future um, uh, coaches and facilitators and teachers learners um, um, in that world of, of uh, um, social impact through, through music making uh, would, would, would learn, would best learn and maybe uh, um, cross shore and learn together and have improvisers who, based, who just have other skills and arrangers who have other skills than, than those playing instruments. And, and uh, so I think, I think that would be, now that I think of it, I think that would be really a, another really important thing to learn and to bring to the table. Um, I would like to dream in the end a little bit. Okay, so I, I, I can start. Um, I, would, I would say based on, on, your, on your suggestions and, and on these thoughts, I would say, okay, we, I'm, I'm living in this state of Baden-Württemberg. We, we call ourselves um, um, the music state or something. Okay, we take some amount of money um, and um, we create these exchanges on a, on a large scale. I mean, I would say all music students in a, in a certain semester, they have the opportunity uh, to go somewhere in a, in a music education project. It doesn't have to be so far. It can also be, it can be global, but it can, can also be local and, um, and contribute and, and share music in, in these situations. And they are trained and prepared for that. And maybe in exchange, um, a community from, let's say, Accra or from Caracas or from Kios 
comes to Freiburg or comes to the city of the music university and shares their, their musical knowledge. And we, we really start to build partnerships and, and start to build friendships and, and start in the end to start understanding for situations. I mean, here is, 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 is two and a half hours flight from here, but it's, it's very hard to understand the situation there without talking to somebody like you, Andreas, really get an understanding of the situation. And I think it's very important that, especially in Europe, we have a comfortable life in general, so we, we can really um, go and see where we can help and where, where we can contribute as musicians. Let's do a round of dreams, okay? Andreas, you want to go next? With yeah. pleasure. I have a dream. <laughs> this is um, every f professional football club in Germany has a youth section. Yes. There is not a single professional orchestra from out of 130 in Germany, which has a permanent children and youth orchestra running. Wow. And how can get they away with mm -hmm. it? So my dream would be that first they started and second, some orchestra could be from Freiburg, could be from anywhere, would say to us, we get, we foster your project mm -hmm. and we would become part of their life. Mm -hmm. It can also be a university. We don't mind. We are promiscuitous in, in that mm -hmm. way. But I think all of our projects, uh, lacking of money, lacking of, of uh, a, a, a lot of time, 90% of our time we spend with administration and with organizing money and doing things, the moment till we get to make music. It's like kind of the last minute. Mm -hmm. So if, we, if this could come together and um, every orchestra would consider this as a normal part of its daily life, we would be on a much higher level. And it, it's something which would include music schools and not exclude them because there is another thing, uh, the end of the dream is that also music schools would offer permanent classes, classes in different ages, like, yeah, like you learn language and like you learn things. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a normal thing. And then we can come away from this elite thing. And I think then we would be really a part of, of community as an essential system relevant part and not as an extra like a Freizeit park. Mm -hmm. Very good. Monia, you want to keep going? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I would second what Andreas just said and uh, also uh, add to it that right now music is really in Germany too, not only in Accra and uh, other countries, is really a privilege of the richer children. Mm -hmm. I think it's really a problem that right now only the bourgeois children can have access to playing an instrument or learning an instrument. And I think that we, something we can wish for in the future or hope for in the future is that music lessons will be something that can be available and less expensive for everyone in our society and not only the bourgeois children who come from um, parents who worry about um, learning an instrument with their children and that um, everyone can have access to an instrument because I think it's not only really fun and amazing to make music but also it's quite therapeutic and it would be amazing to worry more about inclusion in music. <laughs> nice, good. Etienne, a dream? Yeah, not, not so much to add. I think, yeah. I think it's the same vision. Yeah. It's the vision that the, um, the cultural world becomes even more community oriented and have dialogues. It's not a it's not a top-down uh, um, teaching. We're also learners, but to to and facilitate these these meetings and 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 uh, yes, orchestras, yes, universities, uh, yes, music schools, um, as I would say, three major parts in the music ecosystem. Um, uh, there can be much more happening uh, around around here. I think you know. I think I think there are geographically places where where where. Things are slightly more advanced, um, but but there's still everywhere work to do. But I think around here, um, in the German German speaking part of the world, there's there's a lot to do. Yeah. So it's the same vision. It's just sort of uh, something something really crucial that should happen. 
Okay, that's very good to hear. I, th I think, I mean, this talk is, I think, is at a good point to, to finish it, but in a volume two, it will be very interesting how to do it. I mean, you have, everybody, all of you have great experience in, in how to run something that we call an NGO or, or some kind of, you know, to take action. You know, you know how to do it. But uh, it, 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 it requires, of course, different levels of, of, of getting, getting it to work especially if you think large scale. So it would be very interesting to talk about this. Maybe, I'm just thinking, maybe it would be interesting to talk about it with people who are interested in spending money. There are people who are interested in, in, in doing this or to, to people um, from universities, from, organi from existing organizations, if they can really do departments, whatever. It would be really, really interesting to, con to continue this. But that's very, very, a very good, a, very good point for me to well to to close the evening and think about it i think there's so many so many things and i'm happy that i can go back to this conversation because i recorded it record button is still is still on so i have everything on tape and um i can i can highlight for myself and maybe for you and for the audience the the most the most impressive moments of this and i would like to broadcast it in the live stream tomorrow that's one, one goal, but I think we should, we should really uh, put this online sooner or later, uh, this talk, because it's very interesting perspectives and a, a good start. So, thank you all. It was, it was a pleasure. It was kind of late. Andreas, you are even one hour later than, than we are. It's true. Uh, right. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> fine. Late night but, concerts are very familiar. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, especially down there in Greece. <laughs> yes. So thank you. It was fantastic. It was yeah, really, really nice uh, meeting everybody. Yes. And, and Thanks a lot. And I'm sure we stay in contact. You are in contact anyway. We are in contact. <laughs> and <laughs> I think we maybe we created some new some new networks here. Yeah. It's good. Can I can I just you can put yeah. this off the record? Okay, yes, we are done. Yes, you, yeah, yeah. you have a piano in, in your back. Yeah. Um, and maybe you you all know this story, but yeah. it's something which also drives me in the moment where I thinking oh is this all bullshit what we yeah. do or not do does everybody know of you how goethe got to know the music of beethoven no there was someone playing him the symphonies on the piano because there was no spotify there was yeah. no youtube and this was an 11 year old boy called Mendelssohn. wow okay and he played it to him and he explained it wow. to him. I had no idea. So, Beethoven had his first professional job when he was 14. So we have to, Mozart we know anyway, but we have to consider that we have to raise the next Mendelssohn, the next Beethoven, the next Mozart, because they are there. It's not because parents pushed them, they're just mm. there. And we all only have to give them the floor. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't matter if it's in Hios. We are only here because this is the shame of Europe. But everybody who knows this book of Jean Ziegler, yeah, Die Schande Europas, read it. This is the thing. <laughs> but you also have yeah. areas in Germany, in Switzerland, where there is difficult, uh, difficult situations. And so you can... You never need the excuse to go somewhere, but it's of course better to have a, a network where you can have exchange. But don't excuse yourself not to go. You can't go somewhere. Just start it and just God sake do it. It's 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 an easy thing. And the children they show us the way. Totally. It's not us teaching them; they teach us. 